and thanks to, uh, to Joseph's nice introduction. And uh, I really want to thank you all for coming on this special day. Um, I really didn't expect uh, anybody who would have, like, who had a mood to come to attend a linguistic talk uh, today. So really, thank you very much. Um, so today's talk, the topic is uh, 3,500 characters versus 26 letters, inefficient or efficient. Um, so like I was living in an apartment last year, and one day the agent of the landlord just came to the apartment to take care of some business. So she just she knew that I was Chinese, so just she asked me a random question. And how many letters are there in Chinese? And I was like, uh, we don't have any letters, and we have characters. And then she asked me, and how many characters do you have? And I was like, um, a few thousand. <laughs> she, and then I showed her a, a Chinese book, and with all you know, the, ch the Chinese text. She, so she was completely amazed and also overwhelmed by just Chinese writing. So she thought, like, how, how can anybody possibly learn such a language? So how can anybody just learn a, a language that has the basic building blocks in the number, in the range of like 3,000 or several thousand? So that's, my, that's the question I would like to address today. Okay. So let's compare um, the writing systems of the two languages. First one is English. So the English writing system, the basic building, the basic units are letters, right? And for a Chinese writing system, the basic units are characters. And in terms of number, there are 26 letters in English alphabet. So that covers, that gives you 100% coverage. So you recognize all the thing that's written down, okay, in a paper, the letters. And but for Chinese, um, for in order to have uh, like over 99%. Uh, coverage of uh, like most ordinary newspaper or magazine articles, you need about 3,500 characters. Okay, so for Eng so English is it a like, that's very manageable, right? And English and Chinese is it overwhelming? And uh, so is English an, an efficient language? And is a Chinese an inefficient language? Okay, so let's just uh, take a quick look at a, just a newspaper a clip. Okay, so you can see all these little things. So there's a, just what Chinese characters look like, okay? So this is another one. And uh, this is uh, something I found in a, just a magazine, just to give you a visual impression of what the writing of the language looks like. So you can see, so you can, you can tell apart the characters, right? There's, they're in chunks. But there are no word boundaries, and there are no space between each word. And uh, the only space you see there are just for punctuation marks. Okay, so you really have to know the meaning in order to know, like process, process the, the sentence. Okay, so, so how does the writing system work? So I just give you some, uh, a couple of sentences. Uh, we'll, we'll analyze them in more detail. So the sentence reads, 我爱北京天安门. Okay, so you can see for each character, there's just one syllable corresponding to it. 我爱北 and this, this line is from a famous uh, children's song in Chinese, okay? And the English uh, tr uh, translation is, I love Beijing, so Beijing together, two characters, one word in this case. And the Tian'anmen is sky, peace, gate. The, the overall meaning, connected meaning is, I love the heavenly peace gate in Beijing. And the heavenly peace gate is right on uh, Tian'anmen Square. It's the entrance to the forbidden city. Okay, the second sentence in that song is Tian'anmen shang tai yang sheng. Okay, so again, seven characters and you hear seven syllables. So Tian'anmen shang tai yang sheng. And the second line, second line is the phonetic uh, system we use in, Ch in mainland China just to transcribe the sounds of the characters. So the purpose of that is not for writing, it's for people who speak other Chinese dialects to learn the standard pronunciation of Chinese, and also for foreign learners to learn the pronunciation of Chinese. Okay, but it's not a writing system. Okay, and the meaning is sky, peace, gate, above, sun, rise. And uh, the English sentence for that is the sun rises from above the heavenly peace gate. Okay, so, so then how does each what does each character 
represent. So does it represent a sound? Mm. Just from what you saw in earlier slides, do you think each character represents a, song, a, a sound in this language? Like when we say represent a sound, we mean consistently. Okay, if, for example, if this one, uh, you think the first one, wo, if you think wo sound correspond to, if you think the, the character wo, the first character represents, represents the syllable wo, it should do that uh, across the board. Okay, for all, like, for all words that sound like wo, we should use the same character to represent it. Just like t, like t, okay, in English. So whenever we say t, and that the letter should be t. Of course, there are some irregularities, but in, in general, that should be that way. Okay, so from the example, can you tell me, does the character in Chinese represent sound? No, okay, so no, <laughs> it doesn't represent a sound. So if the symbol doesn't represent the sound systematically or consistently in the language, then it's not a phonetic writing system. It's not a phonetic writing system, okay? And some people say Chinese is a pictographic language, and I, I bet you hear that a lot. Right, because the characters they represent some of the appearances of some objects. Okay, so is it? So let's see. Okay, so these are this is chart shows you some characters uh, written in the styles in different periods of history of China. So the rightmost column, that's how we write these characters now. Okay, the so-called simplified characters in mainland China, and the this one, you can, t you can see the English meaning corresponding to these characters. And the leftmost column, that's the oracle, oracle bone scripts. So that's the oldest forms of these characters. And oracle bone scripts uh, were used in like 3,500 years ago in Shang Dynasty, okay? So, and let's look at the first line. So that's the characters for the word meaning human, okay? So you can tell can you tell, if, if you don't know the meaning yet, can you tell it's a person? Sort of, right? But <laughs> you really need some imagination <laughs> to get that. Okay, so person and the shape, the form changes over time to that now. So still like two strokes supporting each other. Okay, and then the second one is woman. That's harder to tell, right? Mm -hmm. So that's actually a person kneeling down. Kneeling down, okay. And the third one is ear. Can you tell it's a right ear or left ear? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, but it does look like an ear. Okay, and uh, the fourth one is horse. Does it look like a horse? But you have to, you have to look. You know, I mean, that way, right? So the four legs are facing to the left. So you know, in drawing, yeah, if you turn it like uh, to like ninety degrees, it will look more like a horse. Okay, and then this one, this one fish, right? That one is good. And this one. Mountain. This one, sun. So now, so at that time, they're kind of round in shape, and now it's more like a, like a square, a square. Okay, and this one is moon. So moon here really really looks like ear, right? <laughs> Just to, but without that uh, curve, it's a straight here. And this one is rain. Is rain. So you can see the drops, like raindrops coming down from the sky. And the last one is cloud. So it just mimics the, like the shapes of a cloud in a sky. And what's interesting for, for this line is, so you can see the evolvement of this particular character. It became more complicated in the middle. Okay, and then it's simplified to the current form like this. So the current form actually is more like the most, the oldest form in Oracle Bone scripts. So nowadays, a lot of people criticize simplified characters, right? So a lot of people think, oh, Drop this. Uh, okay, is it good now? Okay, so, but in this case, actually, the simplified just went back to the most, the original form of the character. So, I, I don't think it's, um, you really need to study the history of Chinese characters in order to make, um, make a good or solid statement about like which system is better. Okay, so any questions here about this chart? Okay, so if we, yeah, okay. It seems like there's less curves. So yes. Like it's more straight. Like yes. Just the top one is a little bit curved. Yes, 
That's a very good observation. Yeah, so now, so it's from more round into more square and straight lines and with angles. Yeah, that's a, like, it's a big, that's a, like a ten, trend in the in development, in the evolvement of characters. And also, um, can you tell, like, there are one point where characters change, like, suddenly, like, the most? That's between which, which column and which column? The, from the, between the lesser seal and uh, this one, clergy. So just between these two periods, the forms of characters change the most. The character, a cloud, uh -huh. um, in the middle, it's like there's a combination of both the rain oh, yes. and the cloud. Right, right. Which makes sense. Right. Yeah. But it's originally... That the rain is being dropped out of the picture. Right. Okay. Right, so here, yes, the rain, the rain article is added, was added to the character of Cloud. So it, for a period, the, the character looked like this. But the, the most oldest form, original form, it just does just a simple shape of a, like a cloud. Yeah, okay. But then why did you just say align the order in this way? For example, you, like the correct script, the uh -huh. way, Standard script and running script, and then the modern simplified or that's that in, that in, in timely order. These characters were arranged in the timely order, it's from the oldest, from the Oracle Bone scripts time period to to now. Okay, because this form, this form, it's uh, so after this time, the characters were pretty much standardized. Okay, and in last century. Uh, in mainland China, characters were simplified with a further more. Okay, so it looked like they look like now. But actually, this already the characters were already look like this uh, at that time in Han Dynasty, about like 200 A.D. Okay. Okay. So from here, so if we only look at these characters, they are all pictograms, pictograms. Okay. But we cannot say the entire writing system is pictographic. A system, okay, because how do you represent <coughs> concepts like already or philosophy or a grammatical particle, okay, with pictograms? That would be very, very hard, right? Those abstract concepts, okay? So actually, only a small number of characters are pictograms, and other characters were created in some other ways, okay? So Chinese writing system is not a pictographic writing system. In uh, if we talk about the whole system, but some words, some characters in it are pictograms. Okay, so let's look at some major ways characters were created. Okay, the first one is pictogram. Okay, so uh, those are characters that mimic the appearance of the objects rep they represent. Okay, so for example, all those characters we just saw in the previous slide, and also this one, like dao, meaning light knife. Okay. So I'll just show you later how this is a pictogram. And the second one is ideograms. So pictograms with ideographic indicators to visualize some abstract concepts. For example, for example, the character meaning blade. So it's related to knife. Okay. So it just has one more dot to it. Okay. For, so dao originally is looking like, it's written like this, and this just looks like the shape of a knife. And here, like, people were like, okay, I'm not talking about the whole knife. I'm talking about here, just this part, okay, the blade part. So they just put a dot there. In, that's, that's, that's an indicator, okay? They just say, okay, I'm talking about here, and this, the whole thing now means blade. So this is not a 100% ideogram. So we call it, uh, oh, well, it's not a 100% pictogram. We call it ideogram. Okay, and another example is the second one, above, meaning above. The character is sha. So you can see first there is a horizontal line. So this functions as a reference line. And um, then people were like, okay, I'm not talking about this part of the line. I'm talking about this area, the area above the line. And the whole thing means above. Okay, and the, the horizontal, the, the vertical line you, you see there, that's just added later. Okay, at the, at the first, it's just a dot above a line. So now, can you tell me what this character means at first? Below. Below. Sorry, yeah, just... Oh, uh, 
Should I, where should I put it? There. Okay. Okay. So this is a blade, the character for blade. This is above and this is below. And later a vertical line was added there. Below. Yeah, this is above, this is below. <laughs> okay. Okay, is it is it good now? But it blocks that, right? <laughs> In front of the podium, no. but well, I won't be able to see you. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I just only use the board you can, just uh, you for. Can put it over there. Yeah, just put it over there. We'll block anything. I'm not going to use it much. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here. Okay. So about that's above. This is below, and that's knife and blade. Okay. And next one. Next way to create a character, we, we call those characters associative uh, compounds. So that's characters in which each component hints at the meaning. For example, xiu meaning to rest. Okay, so can you tell me what the left part, what character the left part is? People, People yes. And the right part looks like tree. Yes, it meant tree, okay, in the past. Now it means wood still related in terms of meaning. So it meant tree. So when you have a person next to a tree, he's resting. Okay. He's, uh, he's leaning, he's resting against a tree. And so the whole character means rest. Okay. So we call this like a compound. So it's a character, but it's like a compound character has two parts. And when you put the meanings of each part together, that gives you the meaning of the, uh, the overall meaning of the character. So it's called associative compound. So, and the fourth type, a very, very, a uh, useful way to create characters uh, is phonetic compounds. Okay, those are characters in which well, one component hints at the general semantic category of the meaning, and the other component, which is a phonetic part, hints at the pronunciation of the character. Okay, so for example, the character may meaning plum. So on the left part, that's that's a tree, and the right part. The, pronounce, the character is pronounced mei, okay, just listen, mei, and the character, the total, the, the, this, this character itself uh, is pronounced mei, so basically the same pronunciation, right, except for the tone. And, but the right part, the right part, mei, it means every, like every day, every month. So semantically, it has nothing to do with plum, the plant, okay. So we only use the phonetic value of that part just to give you a hint of the pronunciation of the entire character. But the left part, the wood or the tree radical, tells you the overall meaning has something to do with like trees or plants. Okay. And the second character example is tong, a copper. Okay. So the left part is the radical meaning metal, metal or, or gold or metal. And the right part, can you, can you guess the pronunciation? Tong, yes. <laughs> okay, so the right part itself is pronounced tong, and the entire character is pronounced tong. Okay, but the right part, the meaning, is, it means the same. The same. So it has nothing to do with copper. Okay, so we only use its phonetic value. Okay, so this character, uh, this type of characters are called phonetic compounds. Two parts, one part tells you the pronunciation. Okay, and actually, uh, the fourth way actually counts for most, the biggest number of characters we use now. Like most characters nowadays are actually fall into the fourth category. So only a small number of characters are still pictograms or ideograms. Okay, if we look at the total number of characters we use now. So, are these more like um, letters? Like letters in Okay, yeah, that's a very good point. That's a very good point. That's actually how other languages in the world uh, like, like gradually evolved into phonetic writing system. Okay, but in Chinese, the thing is, it's not consistent. Okay, this character is pronounced mei, but it doesn't, it's not used whenever we want to write a character that, whose pronunciation is mei. We have many choices. So we have a whole bunch of characters with the pronunciation mei, but we use a lot of forms 
to represent that. So it's not consistently representing the combination may. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So what kind of writing system is Chinese? So it's not phonetic. It's not pictographic. Okay, so when we talk about the type of writing system, we really need to capture what linguistic unit in the oral language each symbol in the writing system represents in a consistent way. Okay, so we have linguistic units when we speak, okay, either a sound or some, some other you know, longer segment, and we have some symbols in writing. So what each symbol represents, like how, what's the cor correspondence, that really decides the nature of the writing system. Okay, so when each symbol represents an individual sound, we call it alphabetic writing system. For example, English, French, Spanish, German, so all these Western languages, and to some people's surprise, Korean, too. Okay, so Korean, it looks like a chunk of things, like Chinese, but they're, they're not characters. It has sounds in it. Okay, it's an alphabetic uh, writing system. And when each symbol represents a syllable, Syllable is not individual sounds, it's a combination of a vowel and zero to multiple consonants. Okay, like I. I is one what, vowel, but it's a syllable. Or like me, that's also a syllable. If each symbol represents a syllable like in a consistent way, it's called a syllabic writing system. So for example, Japanese. Okay, so if you study Japanese, you just memorize all the, the syllables, and uh, for, each syllable, for each syllable, they have a symbol for it, like a, i, u, e, o, ma, mi, mu, me, mo, everybody have to <laughs> memorize that, okay? But they don't have one symbol just for m, mm, or for, for like s, right? They have like sh, one symbol for xi, one symbol for ma, okay? So that's syllabic writing system, okay? And when each symbol represents a morpheme, that's another linguistic unit, we call it morphemic writing system, okay? So I'm not sure if you ever heard of the term morpheme. So that's a uh, linguistic term. So a morpheme is a linguistic unit whose meaning cannot be further broken down. So it's the smallest meaningful unit in the language. Okay, it's not just one single sound or syllable. It has to have a meaning. But the meaning cannot be further broken down. Okay, so we call that unit morpheme. So for example, the English one runway, that's a word, right? And has how many meaningful parts does it have? Two. One is run, one is way. Each has a meaning, and the meaning is related to the entire meaning, right? The overall meaning of, of the entire word. So both are free, speak because both are free words. You just combine them, so it has a, give you a new meaning. So free, meaning, uh, free means they are freestanding words, okay, at each part. And uh, for example, another example, the word active also has two parts. It has two morphemes. One is act, the other is if. So one is free, the other is bound. Okay, act is free because it's a word, you can use act, right? Just act now, okay? So, but if, so this also has a meaning, but it doesn't have a content meaning. It doesn't have, it has a grammatical meaning. Its function is to change something into an adjective. It's an adjective suffix, okay? But you cannot use it alone, so it's not a freestanding word. So we call it suffix, and it's bound. It's a bound morpheme. Okay, and uh, sometimes the entire word, the, all the parts are bound. For example, international. This word, how many parts does it have? How many meaningful parts does it have? Four. First part is inter. The second part is nate. And the third is sh, uh, un. Okay, but there's a phonolog phonological fusion when you pronounce them together, nation. Okay, but it's actually, it's nate and uh, in. And the last part is o. Okay, so none of them is a free word. They're all bound, but they all have its own meaning, either concrete content meaning or grammatical meaning. Okay, so inter has a concrete meaning, like between, among things. Okay, and nate, do you know the meaning of nate? It's related to birth or be born. Okay, like nation or native. So those words all have the same nate in it. And in, that's just a noun. Noun ending. So it changes the word into a noun. Whenever you see a word ending in ion, ion, you know it's a noun. So it's a suffix, okay? And this one, when you see o, you can tell it's an adjective. 
So it's a, it's a suffix that makes a word into an adjective. So some of them have grammatical meaning, some of them have the concrete <coughs> content meaning. Can the first part of the intro be broken down to in and then ter? Uh, well, each part has to, be, has to have some meaning. In, maybe, but ter, what does ter mean? Yeah, it's like a, a typical example <laughs> in linguistics is Mississippi. So we think it's one morpheme. It cannot be broken down. But some people say, oh, there's miss in it. OK, but what is uh, Mississippi? OK, <laughs> so it has, has to, first, the, the meaning of each part has to contribute to the entire meaning. And <coughs> second, each part has to, collectively, like each part has, has to have its own meaning. OK. So a, a morpheme could be multisyllabic. Yes, in English. In English, yeah. OK, so, so we, we just saw some examples of morphine. OK, let's uh, look at Chinese. So in 99, over 99% of the cases, one character corresponds to a morphine in Chinese. OK, for example, from the, exam the, the children's song example we just saw, 我, it means I. OK, the character 我 stands for the, the morphine, I. I means to love, 北. So people, you may not know before, Beijing actually has two morphemes in it. Bei actually means north, Jing means capital. Because Beijing is the northern part of uh, China, it's, it's a capital, okay? That's how the city name came, okay? So Beijing, and we also have another city called Nanjing, meaning south capital, okay, literally, okay? And the Tian means sky, An means peace, Men means gate. Okay, so, uh-huh. Well, the word arm, please. Mm -hmm. Actually, you can break it into two parts. Down below is a woman, right? And then above is like a house. That's uh, that's what we call ideogram, uh, associative compound. It has two parts. Each contrib contributes to the meaning of it. A woman in the house means peace. But you cannot be broken down. <laughs> it can, yeah, you can explain that way. But you cannot break the unit down into like the the pronunciation and cannot be. It, Further broken down, yeah, okay. Uh, so it has so morphine has to be a combination of form and sound. So it's a form and sound together that that's a morphine. So that cannot be further broken down, okay. So we can and not all these morphemes are free, though. And a lot of native speakers don't realize it. So wo is free, i is free, and actually, jing uh, is not free. So when we, when we say, oh, this is the capital of China, we cannot say, this is the Jing of China. OK, so it, it's bound. So it has to occur combined with another morpheme to say it together. OK, so you, can, it, you cannot say, this is a, and fill the blank with Jing. That doesn't work. OK, and also, Tian is free. OK, look at the sky, look at the Tian, that's fine. OK, but An is not free. It's not free. OK, and the men, it's free. Open the door, open the gate. Uh, open the men, that's fine. OK. Would there, be a, would there be a word for capital? Yes, shoudu. That's a completely <laughs> different word. Completely different than yeah, okay. yeah. Jingcheng. Right, or jingcheng in Asian time, yes. OK, so some are free, some are bound. So Chinese, the conclusion is Chinese is a morphemic language because each symbol represents a f morpheme in the language. Okay, and a morpheme is a linguistic unit, uh, which is bigger than a sound, bigger than a syllable. Okay. okay, now how many common morphemes are there in Chinese then? How many common characters we just said? Yeah, 3,500. So that goes back to the beginning. We said we have this many common characters, and each character is a morpheme, so we have that many common morphemes, okay, in Chinese. Is it a lot? Yeah. Yes. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> before you answer it, think about in English, do you just have over 3,000 meaningful units? You we have 8,000 different syllables that we can Syllables, speak. okay. Mm -hmm. But each syllable doesn't necessarily have a meaning, yeah. right, okay. Okay, so, so if you recognize all these 3,500 characters, that gives you over 99, bigger, like over 99% coverage uh, in an ordinary newspaper or magazine article. Okay, so you'll be doing pretty good. And if you only know the first thousand most common characters, that gives you 92% of coverage. Still pretty good. Okay, it's, it's a, 
Like first, like first year, I think after studying in elementary school for elementary school for two years in China, the kid will know more than a thousand characters. Okay, so then after that, it can read pretty much like a lot of things already. Okay. Oh, that's from a source. Just from a, uh, I'll give you. It's from here. Yeah, there's a there's a government uh, agency called Language and Writing Commission of China. So they compile a list of modern Chinese common characters. So, yeah, yeah, okay. And they give you this data. Okay. So if you only know the first 500 most common characters, it gives you already gives you 75 percent of coverage. Okay. So that's very very encouraging to students, to foreign students who learn Chinese. Okay. It's not that much actually. Okay. So, but we know that. We know now that morphemes are not words, right? They're not the, exactly the same thing. Why? Because if they're free, then they're words. But if they're bound, they're just word parts. Okay, so you have to know how to combine them, or how, how to, of course you have to know how to use them in order to learn the, the language, okay? So, so morphemes are not exactly uh, words. And um, in modern Chinese, the majority of words actually are two morpheme words two morpheme words, okay? And there are quite some single morpheme words out there, too, and a small number of multi-morpheme words. Okay, like we see, the, like uh, Beijing, that's a two morpheme words, the capital of China, okay? And then we see Tian'anmen, the heavenly peace gate, that's three morpheme, okay? Uh, proper now, okay? So, but the good thing is, the good news is, all, almost all new words are formed out of existing morphemes, okay? And another good news is the characters basically stopped being created after Han Dynasty. So that's uh, about 200 AD. So like long, long, long ago, starting from long, long time ago, no new characters were created. So that, that's it, okay? And except for a very small number of new characters invented in recent couple of hundred years in order to write borrowed words borrowed Western scientific terms. Okay, people kind of uh, manipulate the, the existing characters, just add a part and, you know, just to, in order to write words like oxygen, you know, or some medicine or medical terms, okay, or in chemistry, physics, huh? Ice cream. Oh, that's another, like, long words, phonetic translation. Yeah, yeah, that's another, yeah, another issue. Chocolate. <laughs> for chocolate, okay, for... <laughs> yeah, for coffee, like for Western, not just scientific, for like from different culture. If we there, it wasn't such a thing in Chi in Chinese culture, and then we use existing words, maybe ch like mo like modify them a little, and to write those uh, terms. When they're when the new words are incorporated, like we have a lot of words in English that are clearly French, or right? Or are from they incorporated China. Like, would we be able to recognize them? No, that's a, a major difference between Chinese loanwords and uh, like Western language loanwords. We just still, we, we like our own system so much, we just use the existing characters to transliterate all of them. Yeah, to transcribe all of them. Okay, so, so that means, in another word, learning and memorizing new words are hardly a burden to native Chinese speakers because we know all the characters already. Okay, we just need to know the new ways of combining them. Okay, so I'll give you a lot of examples now. Okay, so first one, the word is yue. Pronounce the yue. It means month. It also means moon. So those two are related, right? Okay, so if we put the character meaning one, so just one stroke, okay, one before it, yi yue. It doesn't mean one month, okay, it means January. And ar yue, it means February. Ar means two. Okay, san yue. Three months, it means March. Can you tell me what <laughs> April would be? Si yue. That would be four months, okay, literally. And shar yue, December, that's three characters, three morphemes, ten to month. So very straightforward, very literal. So it's kind of like a child language, right? Okay, so for 11, it's one one. 12, it's one two, okay? <laughs> okay, and next, xing qi, it means week. Okay, and the, fir the, the first character, it means star or any celestial body in the sky. And the T, it means period or time. 
but qi actually is bound, okay? So uh, xin qi means weak, so the kind of period of stars. That makes sense, right? And you want to say Monday, xin qi yi, okay, xin qi plus one. And Tuesday, xin qi plus two. And Wednesday, xin qi plus four, three. Okay, so now count now how many different English words are there already. Okay. <laughs> Sunday is Xing Qi Sky or Xing Qi Ri. Yeah, Xing Qi Tian or Xing Qi Ri literally means Xing Qi Day or Sky. Okay, like literally. So, so Sunday is a little different. But for the other six days, we're just adding, we just change the numbers. Okay. So that just uh, reduces the, the burden, right? The, the memory burden a lot. That's a very good question. I thought about that when I was writing the, the slide. I don't know. I don't, I don't know, but the... F, uh, I don't know, but and there's also expressions like um, one month. We have another expression for one month, and one week. That's a, like different word order and uh, other things going on. Yeah, I, I really don't know how to answer this question. Okay, so... And Chinese also has a lot of generic Morphemic, uh, like generic morphemes indicating categories of things. Okay, we really like to like, have a like general term for the category. Then we have a specific names under this category. For example, for B, that covers all writing utensils. Okay, so if we have tian bi, like lead B, guess the meaning? Lead B, pencil. Okay, and for mao bi, hair B, brush. Does it make sense? And if we have a gang bi, like steel bi, that's pen. Okay, already three different words in English. Okay, and yuan zhu bi, like round bead bi, that'd be ball pen. Okay, so sometimes I find it really hard to ask someone to give me a bi. Okay, I have to specify whether it's pencil or pen, but it really doesn't matter to me. I just want a bi. Okay, but I don't know how to say it. I have to pick one. And uh, another example, like guo means cooking utensil. Okay, so all kinds of, like chao guo, stir fry guo, that would be like the Asian wok. Okay, uh, if I have a zheng guo, like steam guo, like a steamer, okay, or thing, like the, 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 the thing you use to steam things. Okay, if we have a flat bottom guo, can you tell? It's like pan. Okay, we we'll just call it flat bottom guo. Okay, ping di guo. And we have a fry guo, a jian guo. Sort of like a skillet. I don't know if my translation is correct or not. Just kind of like skillet. So, but for, for English, there are so many different terms. But for Chinese, it's just all kinds of guo. Okay. And for high pressure guo, this one is easier. It's a high pressure cooker. So this way is really the way Chinese words are formed. Okay, how, how nice it would be if all English words are formed like that. Okay, it's so much more straightforward. Okay, <clears throat> okay. and the word formation, formation process of Chinese makes it very easy to see the connection between concepts. Okay, for example, nu means female. It's a bound morpheme, but it means female. And nan means male. So if we add like 女人, like female person, it means woman. And 女人 is an independent word, okay? If we say 男人, like male person, it means man, okay? And I don't think man is a morpheme in women, right? These two are not related in English, okay? And for female child, that would be, would be girl, okay? Sure. With the man, the uh -huh. man the, 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 there is some. Is it like a knife underneath and a field above? Uh, I have to look up. It looks like it, but I have to. It's like a yeah, knife, and then there is a tea. Look like that's, here? It's a field. Oh. So it's like the man with oh. the field. Oh. That's a well, the bottom character is a little, it means power. A power or strength, okay. And the above is field, but I I really need to look up uh, the oracle, like some uh, like literature, to see. If 
Well, you can make up a lot of story. Just look at the surface of the character, but. A lot of times, it, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. You really need to dig in the literature to see how the character evolved over time. Okay, but for in order for your ease of memorization, you can just make stories in your in your brain, and just just in order to as long as you can memorize it, it helps you to memorize. That's fine, but it may not be uh, like real like real research. Okay, okay for a girl, that's female child. Okay, and a male child, that's boy. Okay, and I don't know how these English words. What are the sources of these English words? Why they're like not connected in any way, like in terms of like you know the the morphemes or the, the meaning. Why why are they not con like related at all? English was invaded so many times by so many conquerors. And they, right, like I I, I assume boy and girl are original Germanic words. I, I just assumed maybe I I think. I assume that they're not French or from a, from a, from a Scandinavian, scan, how to say that word? <laughs> right, right, but I, I don't know, but just uh, it, it makes sense, the Chinese way just makes more sense to me. Of course, I'm, I'm a native Chinese speaker, so. <laughs> okay, okay, so let's see, 学 means study, okay. And the uh, study person, the whole thing is a noun? Student, a person who studies, okay. And 学校, study school. So second character means school already, but you just have a redundant thing added to it. It still means 学校, it still means school, okay? We have 学术, study plus skill or technique. It gives you academics, okay? It takes some uh, imagination. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that straightforward, okay? So another, pers another word meaning like study person, but the person is another character. We have uh, several characters. They all mean, you know, person or people or, or you know person who does something. So this one is not student, but scholar, okay? And the 学期, study period, that's semester, okay? And uh, for 语言学, 语言 means language, study, language study, linguistics, okay? Of course, you can analyze this word and you can tell, oh, lingual, that's from Latin, so there's also a morpheme in it, but it's not as transparent as Chinese. Okay, you have to kind of learn them. Um, so, one more challenge. Okay, fly machine. If you know it already, don't say it. Okay, okay, okay. airplane. Flying machine. Okay, it's a noun. Compute machine. It's a noun. Computer. Okay, roast box. A noun. Oven. Yes. Okay. And luggage box, suitcase, yes. And uh, burn and roast together as a noun. It's a barbecue, okay. <laughs> and uh, sl we have a uh, slide ice. This is a verb, a sport. Like you slide on ice. Ice skate, okay. And then slide snow. You slide on snow. Ski, okay. And you slide on the ladder. What's that? It's an accident. It's an accident. <laughs> it, it slides for kids, for children. Slides. Okay, it looks like a ladder, right? Huati, okay. And then we have ice stick. That's a noun. Oh, it's not a sport anymore. <laughs> it's popsicle. Okay. Okay. So it doesn't have to be nouns, and it doesn't have to be everyday colloquial words. It could be for formal words or other verbs, adjectives. For example, carry heart to worry. Like you carry something on your shoulder, that's a burden. You carry something in your heart, you, you worry about something. Okay, and uh, heart, hurt heart, adjective. Kind of, sad, sad, yeah. And uh, for this one, it's a verb, it means to sue, okay. And so if we have a, like a passive marker, a grammatical marker indicating passive ten, like passive voice plus su, it's a, it's a noun, okay? It's a noun. It refers to the person defendant because defendant is a person who is sued by other people, okay? And so original su, a noun, that would be the person who sue, who sues the other. Other, per, other people as plaintiff, right? Did I 
Is that right? Yes. Plaintive. Okay. And for this one, a verb. Uh, I, I hope I didn't check this. It's prick, like prick on the rose. Is that right? The right word? Okay. Prick, stimulate together is a verb meaning to stimulate, to excite. Yes, to stimulate. And we have uh, the same character meaning to stimulate plus move is adjective. That's excited, adjective. Okay, 激动. And we have um, similar, very close, uh, similar words. Stimulate plus generate. That's to trigger, to cause something. So they're all related. But English, they're all like, very, very different words from each other on the surface. OK. So, so you can, oh, another. Next one. Stimulate plus element forms a noun, an element that can like, stimulate you. It's hormone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Jisu. Okay. Um, so, uh, so uh, but not all morphing combinations make sense. Okay. Sometimes you have to be told. Okay. So, for example, we have to just learn by you know, by hearing other things. So, like Dongxi literally means east west, but strangely it means stuff. Okay, like, so I want to go buy some stuff. You say, I want to go buy east to west. Okay, and this has some historical reason, like historical, like a source you can, I can look up. But on the surface, just means east west. Okay, and for this one, paint crow, it means graffiti. Uh, graffiti. Okay, we, we don't know why, like exactly why. Okay, for this one, luggage, it's uh, the first one, xing, it means walk. Li is just the common Chinese surname, like my last name, Li. So, but the things together means luggage. OK, I don't know. <laughs> I still don't know. OK, but such words exist in very small number. And in addition, they're also made of existing characters. OK, no new characters, no new morphemes. It just doesn't make sense on the surface. So learning them imposes little cognitive burden to native speakers. Okay, you just have to know them. Once you know them, you're gonna know it forever. Okay. Okay. So, um, some describe what you can see from previous examples, like Chinese word formation process is like this: you're weaving a big net, okay, in your brain. So everything is connected. For any morpheme in a word, you can always find another word that uses the same character. So each character is used over and over again. So they're kind of connected in all kinds of ways in your, in your brain. OK. Um, so coming back to the type of writing system, and some describe Chinese as a logographic writing system. This is another term. So this writing system is a system where each symbol represents a word. So can we use this term to describe modern Chinese? Now that we just saw the difference between a morpheme and a word. Right, so I I think this is not accurate description for mo modern Chinese at least because a large number of morphemes are bound are bound more than a native speaker realize, realizes actually, and uh, so bound just like Nate in native. Okay, we just saw that example, and they have to combine with another morpheme. Another morpheme could be bound, could be free, but they have to kind of combine with another one to form freestanding words. OK, so I think, and also that's why most modern Chinese words are two morpheme words. OK, because one is bound. You cannot just say it alone. OK, and so I don't think logographic is the right term to describe modern Chinese. But classical Chinese, on the other hand, might be suitable to be called a logographic language. OK, why? Let's look at just one example from classical Chinese. So classical Chinese is the written language used before 1911. So in the, in the past, in the ancient time, whenever someone would like to write down something, they have to follow the grammar and the style of uh, the classical Chinese. Okay. Also, it's written in ch characters. Now, the characters, no change. So character, it's just the grammar, the lexicon, and uh, like word formation process, like change over time. Okay, are different from modern Chinese. So let's look at a sentence from uh, from the Confucius uh, Analects. Um, this thing a character at the end. Be your washer again. Oh, yeah, yeah, I missed a character. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> Professor <laughs> Rosten. OK, so I forgot. I missed the pa There's a particle, grammatical particle in the end. OK. And the character, the sentence reads, 三人行必有我师. So three person walk necessarily 
There is, okay, there is, is one word, uh, my teacher. Okay, so together means when three people walk together, there must be someone who can be my teacher. Okay, you can always learn. Like, there must be someone you can learn, learn from. Okay, so we can see very nicely. So it, classical Chinese, okay, one character, one syllable, one word. Okay, there are no two morpheme words. So a morpheme is a word. Okay, um, so it's modern Chinese version looks longer. Okay, you have to add some words. Like, 三个人一起走,必定有一个人是我的老师. Okay, you can ignore other stuff. There's some other grammatical stuff going on here. But just look at the underlined words. So we have necessarily, in modern Chinese, it's 必定. But in classical Chinese, just one character, 必. Okay, and B in classical Chinese is free. It was a free morpheme already. But in Chinese, in modern Chinese, we, we are still using the character B, but it's bound. We have to com combine it with another character, B ding. So this B ding word it becomes a word, freestanding word. And also for teacher, you cannot say, oh, this is my shi over there anymore. You have to say, this is my lao shi. So we add another thing to the character meant like meaning shi in classical Chinese, in modern Chinese. Okay, but in the past, just one character is enough. It's free already. It was a free morpheme in classical Chinese. Isn't really modern Chinese shi just translated the classical shi into more? Definitely, could be something else. Oh, oh yeah. Each character can correspond to can have more than one meaning. That's for sure. Xing could be like means okay now, right? It also means to walk. And if you pronounce it hang, it means bang. So it's just all, all kinds of things. If lao shi, lao means old, what right. do you if you have a teacher who's young? It's, it's, it's for showing respect. Yeah, Chinese culture, we think old people are more, respect, more respectable. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't. Right, and we also have uh, words for tiger. We call it literally old tiger. Even for, for yeah, for young tiger, we call it little old tiger. <laughs> Xiao Laohu, is that right? <laughs> okay, uh, all right. So uh, the crucial, a crucial difference between modern Chinese and classical Chinese is that in classical Chinese, the vast majority of morphemes are were free, were free. They're not multi-syllable, okay, syllabic. So it was a nice, concise, one syllable, one word pattern. Okay, so I think therefore it might be all right to describe classical Chinese as a logographic language, but it's still correct to call both classical Chinese and modern Chinese writing system morphemic. Okay, these two are not necessarily contradictory. A morphemic language can be logographic language. Okay, but maybe not vice versa. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, another interesting thought I have, I have is, in Chinese, a morpheme is represented by a character, right? And in, Eng in English, a morpheme is composed of a string of letters, at least one, right, like I. Um, so in this sense, strokes that constitute a character is equivalent to letters that constitute a morpheme in English, okay? And their numbers are comparable, actually. And there are 26 letters, right? And there are 30 t different types of strokes in Chinese. And the difference is that visually letters are arranged in a linear way, and strokes are arranged in a nonlinear way. Okay, so those are some examples of basic strokes. Okay, we use to write Chinese characters. Okay, so you can uh, you can see, for example, I write the character for for wood. It meant tree in the past, so just four strokes. Okay, so it's a organized nonlinear way. If I just uh, Writing in a linear way, that would be, okay, it's like uh, four letters. Okay, and in English, you can try writing your words in a non-linear way, okay? For example, the but, if you put B here, U here, or T here, how does it, how does it look to you? Okay, actually, that's how Korean, Korean writing system works. They have a consonant right on the left, upper left corner, and a, you know upper right corner, and the one below. So they look like a character, but they're not. Actually, they have several letters in it. 
Okay, so and for Chinese, of course, it's more complicated. Some parts are inside another part, like this one. Okay, so for example, if you like, you can put like a U, like inside B. I don't know if you would like to do that, but just uh, <laughs> okay, just a funny thing you can do. Okay, interesting experiment. So, so but visually, you know, one is linear, the other is nonlinear, but they all, you know, constitute uh, of morphine in each of the two languages. Okay. Okay, now let's come back to the original question. So whether Chinese is inefficient or inefficient. Okay, and uh, in a Chinese native speaker's mind, words are not so clearly defined. The total number of characters have been clearly documented in all sorts of sources, but the total number of words have, has always been unclear. Okay, and partly it's because in Chinese, word, words are hard to define, and there's no space. Okay, there's no, uh, like, between words. And, uh, and also, the boundaries between a word and a phrase is somewhat blurry in Chinese. And, and also, maybe partly because it doesn't matter that much. Okay, because you know all the individual morphemes, it just combines different way, and it's very easy to learn, very easy to remember, so it doesn't really matter like how many words you know. But how many characters you know, it seems more important to Chinese speakers. Okay, and if you, if you go to China, if you look at a textbook, Chinese textbook for Chinese kids, there are no word list, no glossary word. There is a character list for each lesson. Okay, and, uh, but, so, but just recently in 2008, uh, that's the first dictionary of its kind that um, it, it claims it collects all the common Chinese common words, like modern Chinese common words in that dictionary. And that dictionary collects uh, altogether uh, 50,008 words, words, okay? So we do have a lot of words, but the words are all built on, uh, like, are built on a much, much smaller pond, uh, like a pool of characters, okay? Just several thousand characters, okay? In English, um, I, unfortunately, I didn't find any source discussing the total number of English morphemes. I, I just couldn't find it, okay? But I, of course, I didn't search everywhere. Maybe there's some academic paper that discuss it, but I just didn't find it myself. And, and, but only words, okay? All the dictionaries write and list words. Um, so an average educated adult native speaker knows about 20,000 to 35,000 words, okay? And uh, there are 17, there are 171,476 English words that are current, that are in current use, according to Oxford English Dictionary. Okay, that's a lot. Of course, those are not all common words. Okay. Okay. So, um, what's interesting to me? So first, I thought English must, you know, English must have English vocabulary is huge, is is large. Okay, but I also found this interesting. Okay, the article says, actually, even like for in English, 3,000 words can go a long way. Like, can, also can cover 95% of everyday writing. I don't know if that like uh, matches, like it, 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 that's how you feel, but I just kind of feel you need more than that, <laughs> okay? But, well, according to that um, the article, it says the, like 3,000 words can cover 95, uh, have a 95% coverage. And also, uh, the same article that cites this data also cites 3,000 as a magic number for Chinese speakers to read most Chinese newspaper and watch Chinese movies. So that's consistent with the 3,500 characters I just mentioned. Are there usually subtitles in Chinese Sub in movies? Why, why would watching movies require reading? Oh, I think that's just, uh, I think that doesn't distinguish oral and writing here. It, it just say in order to understand the words, the, the words you hear are composed of those 3,000 characters. Okay, so, uh, so, so this article also cites 3,000, okay, for Chinese, um, but it's 3,000 characters, not ca words, okay. And uh, I don't think we should treat the 3,000 words in English uh, the same. I'm sorry, there is a typo there. And the 3,000 morphemes in Chinese the same. Because it's doubtful that these common 3,000 words in English are the basis for building all the 171,476 words in current use in English. What do you think? I, I, yeah, intuitively, I don't think that's the case. Okay. 
Okay, so English and other Western language, such as German, also have a lot of compound words. Okay, it's not like they don't have it. So, so those words somewhat resemble Chinese words. Okay, for example, ice cream and girlfriend. So they're just a combination of uh, existing words, and but this pattern is far more predominant and prevalent in Chinese. Okay, and the conclusion is so. In my view, Chinese is a highly efficient in economical <laughs> language in terms of its word formation process. I'm not saying it's easy to learn the characters. It's still a very, very challenging and uh, daunting task. Okay, um, so it makes full use of its existing and stable pool of morphemes, and it can generate, in theory, an infinite number of new words. Okay, uh, in a fun, highly creative, and burden-free way. So, I think Chinese is cool. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs>